guys, Della here from Della Larson's class, and today I'm talking about one of my very favorite tools that you can use in the classroom, a Beebot. A Beebot is basically a small little robot that the kids program. Let's face it, our kids are most likely going to have a robot in their home by the time they get to be adults. So it's really important that they're not afraid of coding and programming, starting at five years old. This little guy is so much fun. I mean, let's face it. He lights up, he makes sounds. It's basically kid nirvana. They love it. When you bring out a Beebot in your classroom, I'm telling you right now, all your challenging behaviors will disappear because everybody wants to be part of a Beebot activity. If you say you're gonna need to sit quietly if you wanna turn with the Beebot, I'm telling you right now, your kids are gonna sit quietly because it's going to amaze them. I use this all year long and it doesn't matter if it's September or June. When I pull out the Beebot, everybody, has, I have their full attention. One of the things that I love, love, love about Beebots is that everybody's on a level playing field. I work in a large urban district and I have kids with vastly different experiences. They all come with background knowledge that's so different that some kids are already at a disadvantage before they even show up on the first day of kindergarten. But when you use a Beebot, chances are no one in your class has programmed a Beebot before, has seen a Beebot before, has any idea what they're about to do with a Beebot. It's the first time for so many kids that they are on the exact same level playing field as, their, as other kids who come from different kinds of environments. That alone is worth looking into Beebots. I love how Beebots help kids use critical thinking to plan ahead. I mean, think about that for a minute. They have to think about each step as it goes along. They have to think, what will this step mean for the next step? That complex thinking doesn't happen all the time. And it will help them when it comes to reading, to writing, and to math. The, the skills they start to practice and hone in when they use robotics and they use coding and they use programming are the skills that are going to make them better in every other area of their schooling. Now I know what you're probably thinking. I do not have time to bring robotics in. And I don't blame you. There's not enough time in the day to get through all the things we have to do. So I want you to think differently. Robotics is not another thing to learn how to do or find time for in the classroom. Robotics is another tool to teach the things you're already doing. It's just like a pencil or a crayon or a Google Classroom. It's another tool that we use to help our kids learn those skills that they would need to have. So let me show you how I get started. Okay, so where do you get started? You take your Beebot and you get a map. The Beebot goes a specific amount of distance for every single direction you give it. So you need to have a mat that has squares that are equal to that distance. So I always start with a straight mat because what I want the kids to do is just learn how to get the very basics. So we're only gonna be using the straight command. That's all we're doing. And I always start with a topic that I know that they already know. So something like colors are super easy. Maybe some of my kids might mix up orange and pink but they can certainly match all the colors. And so for this activity today, all they need to do is be able to match. Now, as time goes on and I start to use my Beebot as a tool for teaching, I'm gonna have story retells, I'm gonna have sight words, I'm gonna have um, math equations, I'm gonna have the life cycle of the frog, all kinds of maths. But to begin, I start with something I know they already know because what I'm trying to do is to teach them to program. I'm, right now, I'm not teaching them a skill. So 
I have the mat and I give the kids cards. So I say, pick a card, any card. You wanna print these on Astro Brights, the white, the white Astro Brights to make them really sturdy and then laminate them. Trust me on that one. So have the kids pick a card. Here it is, pink. Boom, they put it on their programming sheet so everybody knows what the end goal is here. Then together we program. We come up with the code. So we start the BBOT on, start here. And together we say, we need to find pink. So how are we going to get from here to here? How many times do we need to tell that BBOT to move and in what direction does he have to move? So we literally go step by step. He has to move forward. Okay, so we write our program right here. Straight arrow. That gets him to blue. Now we need to do another straight arrow. Okay, another straight arrow. He's at yellow. We need to do another straight arrow. And another one and another one so that we have five. Now, when your kids get a little bit more uh, adept at it, they can literally just count that they need to go five and they can write five straight. But again, this is the very beginning. So we're writing out every single solitary step for them. But those, those programs are gonna become really, really complex. One of the things that I love about BeBots is that you have a like view into their mind and you can see there are kids who will make the most convoluted trip to get to where they want to go because they want to challenge themselves, right? They want to have a complex program. So once we have our program, always have to clear, my kids know, clear it, clear it. And then they just program it in. So straight, 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 straight. That's it. Now we're going to press go. And the thing that I do is if the kids make a mistake and they tell me to put six arrows instead of five, I do what they tell me. Because this is kind of like the engineering design process where you come up with your idea and then you test it out. So if they put in six straight arrows to get to pink and it goes and it passes pink, they know they've got to back it up. Having them see it go is so much more powerful than me saying, check that. You want them to realize that they need to do it. And I want them to see that that's part of the design. That's part of what programming it is. Create a program, test it out. Did it get where you wanted it to go or not? And if it didn't, make those adjustments. This is all part of those little tiny steps that help them design that create that critical thinking in their head that will help them like tremendously once they're doing complex math or especially with writing, thinking about the next thing that happens. So did it work? Let's check. I've got to get to a flat surface to show. Okay, you. so did it work? We wrote our program. We're going to pink. We had five straight arrows. We did it. Now we're going to test it out and let's see. My kids always yell blue, yellow, red, purple. And then let's see if it gets to where it's going. Made it to pink. Let me tell you, the cheers that will happen when your BeBot gets where it needs to go will amaze you. That's so cool, isn't it? I'm telling you, the kids love it. I don't know what it is about the sounds or the sights, the, the noises, the lights, the movement. The kids literally go crazy when you bring out the BeBots. So I talked a little bit about a straight mat. These are examples of square mats. So you can make a mat like this that has, um, you know, a word family on it. You can make a really large mat. I mean, who doesn't love the very hungry caterpillar? And you can have a really large mat where the kids are going to need to use a lot more complex programming. And you can do this any way you want. You can have the kids do it in a sequence. What, what foods did he eat on Monday? What foods did he eat on Tuesday? 
whatever. You can just have them work on vocabulary. If you have kids that uh, English language learners in your class, using the BeBot to increase vocabulary, like the best tool ever. So there's all kinds of maps that you can make and you can make them as big or as small as you want to. But the most common question that I get asked when it comes to BeBots is, how do you put the maths together? So I'm gonna show you. This is by far the most common question that I get about BeBots. How do you make the maths? So if you go to my store and you buy a mat for, uh, for BeBots, it's going to come in a PDF and there's going to be a variety of pieces of paper and each piece of paper is going to have one square for the BeBot. What you need to do is print those out, get yourself some tape, get yourself a scissors and get a large poster board. The next thing you need to do is you need to lay out your squares the way you think the mat should be. You can do it whatever way you want. Just get yourself an idea of how you want that mat to look. Lay it out that way so that you know what you're doing and put that right on top of the poster board. The next thing you do is I always take the very first square and I put it on the right. And that square could be just basically is the piece of paper. Then I take the second square and I cut off the paper on the right so that the two black lines will be flush with each other. So these lines right here need to line up. This is how it will look when you're done. You want them to look just like that. I always leave this extra paper all around. If you start cutting out these tiny squares, it just makes it so hard to um, tape them together. And I just tape them. I just tape the paper right on like that. So now you have two. You're going to put the next one right here. So once you have that whole bottom row filled, you go to the next row. And I just cut off the bottom right there and I just move up a row. So this is gonna go right on top of, the frog is gonna go right on top of the tadpole right like that. Once I get to the second row, now you have to trim on both sides because this is gonna go along the bottom and it's gonna go along the side. So you have to trim here and you have to trim here to place it next to each other. So again, those lines are flush with each other. So this is what it will look like. You're gonna have them, you have your bottom row all finished and now you're working on your top row. I always put that tape in a circle so that it's only on the bottom because it just looks nicer. The tape, if you don't have great tape, it starts to yellow over time and maybe you have great tape, but I like to just make that circle so that it stays together. Now that the finished product is all here, you're going to take that and you're going to laminate it. Um, if you don't have a laminator on the in your school, we have one, but it, I don't know what it is about laminators. They're always jammed. It's worse than the copy machine. But so if you don't have one, just put tape in the corners and right here so that the BeBot um, wheels don't get caught. And then the first chance you have, go out and get that laminated. So that's how I put my mat together. You can make them again as complex or as easy as you want them to be. Isn't it fun? I'm telling you, BeBots are awesome. And if you don't have one, I would recommend you get straight to Donors Choose and put in a grant for one. They're not super expensive. They're about, they're under $100. I think they're about $80, I'm not sure. They're made by a company called Terrapin. And I've been lucky enough to have an affiliation with Terrapin. So if you go to their website and you put in the coupon code Della's free ship, you'll get free shipping on it. In full disclosure, I get a little stipend every time you use that code. Um, you don't have to go to Terrapin. Lakeshore has them. I know with Donors Choose, you have to use certain um, companies and Lakeshore is definitely a company you can use for Donors Choose. 
Um, so if you are interested in any of my resources, I have tons and tons of BeBot resources in my store and I take requests. I have lots of um, customers who ask me to make um, BeBot mats about a specific topic. Somebody just asked for our controlled vowels. I'm working on it for you. Whatever you um, need, if you don't see it, please reach out to me at dellalarsonsclass at gmail.com and I will do my very, very best to try to make a mat that will work for you. Um, if you're interested in the really big mats and you're not really interested in that DIY type, you don't want to cut them out and put them together yourself, contact me because I do have a huge printer in my crazy workshop and I can make really, really big mats and I can ship those to you as well. But try a Bebot. I'm telling you right now, whether you need to teach sight words or math or tens and ones or the kids' names or the weather or the solar system or community workers, whatever it is that you're working on, you can get BeBots to help your kids learn the vocabulary, learn about that topic, and they will be so happy. If you have an evaluation coming up, I'm telling you, use a BeBot when your administrator comes in they're literally going to be like, what? You know how administrators come in and they're writing, writing, writing the whole time? When they come in and you're using a B-Bot, they're going to put it down and stare with their jaw open while they watch your kids use complex thinking to program and code a robot. It's awesome. So please follow my store so you'll be up to date on all my Bebop products. And like I said, if there's something that you don't see there that you're just dying to, to get your hands on, reach out to me. And if I can accommodate you, I absolutely will. I hope that you have fun with your kids. I hope you have a great year. And I hope that you'll give Bebop a try. Thanks.